Hey everyone, it's Brendel again here, and today I'm gonna show you how I made the in real life Pip Boy from my last video. I used a simple concept of 3D camera tracking. You might be wondering what is that? Well, just like point or motion tracking, 3D camera tracking tracks the movement of certain contrast areas or points on the scene, and then analyzes the movement of those points to create a virtual camera similar to the camera that the footage was shot with. For example, Tracking the movement of those points on my arm would allow me to replicate their movement with a virtual camera and would also let me place whatever I wanted there, in this case, the Pup Boy. As you might have guessed by now, that technique is used in pretty much every movie where a CGI character appears in real life. I know, shocking. Not the fact that they use that technique, but because, oh god, what is this? So, without further ado, let's get started. First, we gotta talk about the software. I used three pieces of software to make that video. I used Buju for the 3D camera tracking, Blender for the CGI, and HitFilm Express for the final touches. But unfortunately, Buju is not free, but you could probably get away with After Effects booting camera tracker if you have that, or Blender's point tracker itself. And second is the shot. I simply took a pen and drew some small dots in my arm so Buju could have something to track and calculate the camera movement. And third are the extras. We're gonna have to download some extra stuff before we get going. First is a script called Buju to Blender 2.49. And that does pretty much what it says, it's a script to convert the camera and points from Buju to Blender. And second, we're gonna need Blender 2.49 itself, and that's because the script does not support newer versions. But we could easily open the blend file into a newer version like 2.79 or 2.80. Now, go ahead, film your shot, transfer it to your PC, and let's get going! So once you're inside Buju, just click the Import Sequence button. Here's a quick tip, the tracking works better if you're using a JPEG sequence. I tried using an MP4 file, and it did not turn out that great. So open up your JPEG sequence, and now we're gonna go through some of the options that Buju gives you right away. First of all, the frame rate. You gotta set that to the exact same frame rate that your footage was recorded at. In my case, I shot it at 29.97 frames per second, so I'm gonna go with that. And second is the move type. Free move is for when you're pinning your camera freely, like I did in this shot. Noto pan is where your camera is in a tripod and you're just panning around the scene. In this case, I'm gonna go with free move. Now I double check everything, click apply, and then hit close. Now, Bluetooth is pretty straightforward when it comes to tracking. You pretty much just click the Track Features button and click the Advanced button so you can see more in detail what points Bluetooth is going to be tracking. In my case, these are a lot of points we do not need that much. So drop down the sensitivity and change the feature scale to be large. Now just click Start. And now Bluetooth is going to track the movement of some of the random points that I selected. So we're just going to wait for that to be done. Alright, Buju is finished tracking, and as you can see, the movement of the trackers of my arm are pretty good. But there are way too many points in this scene, we only want the points in my arm. So the pit boy can follow the path of my arm and not the entire scene. So what do we do? We select every other point that is in my arm and delete it. And once you're done, just click the camera self button. Now Buju is gonna try and guess the movement that I made with my camera in this shot. No, click anything else here, just go and start. And once it's done, just scroll back in the timeline. And as you can see, the points pretty much stick to my arm. And that is a pretty great track. But now, we're gonna set the scene geometry right. Because Buju doesn't know what's left and right and up and down and all the stuff. So what we're gonna do, we click on the scene geometry button. And here, we can tell Buju was left and right and up and down. So, for the x-axis, which is left and right, you're gonna find two points that are in a pretty straight line for the right or the left. So in my case, these two points work pretty okay. You select them, hold control, and click the other one. Then for the type, you change it to the x-axis. I'm gonna add another one for these two points, which are gonna be up and down. Again, control click to select more than one, and then to the z-axis. Now to apply that, you click connect to select, and I'm gonna do the same for the x-axis. And you can also set up points to be the origin, so every model that you create will spawn right at that point. So we're gonna set this to origin. And now to update everything, click update coordinate frame. And we are done! If you get into 3D view, you can see 
that this is a pretty straight line. That's what we want. Now we're gonna add a test object just to make sure the tracking is perfect. Just click close and go through the timeline. As you can see, the ladybug sticks to my arm. And that's pretty great. So now we're gonna export this into Blender so we can actually use 3D models. We click the export camera button. Now you just browse to whatever you wanna save the file. Now we're gonna change the export type. And for Blender, we're actually gonna export it as a text file right at the end. Don't change anything else here, just click on save. Okay, we can close out of Blender now. And once you've exported your file, let's fire up Blender 2.49. Once you're inside Blender 2.49, just expand this button here. Then go into the text editor, click text, open, and find the script that you downloaded from the description. Now go to text, run Python script. And now you're gonna open that text file we exported from Buju. Click it and click import txt. And if you zoom in, you can see that Blender created a camera and some points, which correspond exactly to what we had in Buju. So you might be wondering, how do we get this into a newer version of Blender? That's easy. Just go ahead and save the file as anything you want. Now we can close out of the Blender and open up the newer version of Blender. In my case, I'm going to be using 2.8. Just go ahead and open the Blender file and just save. And now, select everything by pressing A, Control C to copy, open up a new Blender file, delete everything, and Control V. And now we've got our camera and tracking data into a newer version of Blender. Don't forget to save the frame rate right. Remember we shot the footage at 29.97. And you might be wondering, how do we get our footage to show up in Blender? Easy. In 2.8, you select the camera, go into the camera properties, check background images, add image, then change the type to a movie clip and find your sequence. In 2.7, you just have to press N and there will be a drop down called background images. You just do the exact same thing. And now as we play through the timeline, you can see the points stick to my arm, just like in Buju. Just to make sure everything looks good, I'll add a cube here and position it. I'm gonna hide the Buju data and scale it up a bit. And as we play through, we now have some sort of cube boy in my arm. And that's almost what we want. So now we're gonna go through importing the pit boy into Blender and make it look more appealing, more realistic. Alright, so we're gonna begin by deleting this cube here. And now we're gonna import the pip model into Blender. But luckily for you guys, I already provided the Blender file in the description, which has the pip boy and everything set up the materials, the screen, and everything else you need to be good to go. So, to get this into your project, you just tap A, select everything, Ctrl C, then you go back into Blender, then enable the Blender data, click it, go into edit mode. Select one of the points, then hold Shift S and select cursor to select it. So the pip model will spawn here when we paste it. And now just Control V. Now you just gotta pose it properly to match the rotation of our arm. And as we scroll through the timeline, we now have a pip boy. Yay! Now I'm gonna show you how I made the materials work in case you're interested. So for the pip boy itself, I just plug it into a principal shader and crank the metallic value all the way up. You can see the difference here. I gave it a lot of specular so there will be some good reflections. I increased the roughness to the middle so it wouldn't be too reflected. Okay, I'll go back. Then I just a little sheen and then I plug it up the normal map to the normal node and boom, that was pretty much it. As for the glass, you can see how the glass looks. These were basically a glass shader mixed with a transparent shader and that gave the effect I wanted. As for the screen itself, I actually recorded as the Pip-Boy screen from the Pip-Boy app in my phone, and then saved it as an image sequence, then imported it into Blender so we could use it as a texture. Then that was basically a glossy shader with some emission to give some glow, and I was pretty much good to go. Then I did the rest for the other materials, and I was done. Okay, now is the most important step, lighting. And the best way to get the lighting to match the lighting of the room you recorded is with shooting a 360 map of your room. There are plenty of tutorials teaching you how to do that without needing a 360 camera. I'm not gonna cover it into this tutorial, you could just look it up on Google, it's pretty simple and straightforward. 
So, to import the image you, you shot with the 360 app, you go into the World tab, then click the little icon next to the color, and change it to Environment Texture. Then you just import the image you shot with the 360 app, and click Open Image, and if we go into the Rendered view, you can see the lighting is not really matching up. And that's because we need to match the orientation of the image we shot with the 360 app to the angle that we shot the video. So how do we do that? We disable the background images and the, and the camera properties so we can see it better. And also in the render tab we're gonna disable transparency. And now we change into the shading tab right at the top. And when we change to that tab, we get the viewport and the shader editor. So here in where it says object, change it to world. And here you can see the node set up for the image, which is important. So to change it to orientation, you press Shift and A, then click search, and search for mapping. Place it somewhere, and connect the vector of the mapping node to the vector of the image. So you do the same thing, Shift A, search, and this time, we're gonna open up a texture coordinate. Connect the object of the texture coordinate to the vector of the mapping. And now, it's just a game of try and see what matches the footage. So now you can mess around with the rotation and scale and values until you get something that matches up. In my case this looks okay. I'm also gonna add a sunlight here and increase the intensity of the map. That looks pretty good to me, but there's a little problem here. If we go into the random view again, you can see something looks odd here. And that is, there are no shadows in my arm, and the pimple should be casting some shadows into my arm. But that's because Blender does not have any objects to cast shadows to. The only object here is the Pip Boy. My arm is just some footage behind it. So, you pretty much guess it, we are gonna have to model our arm by ourselves. So, I'm just gonna bring the 3D cursor back here, and we're gonna add a plane. And we're gonna hide the Pip Boy here. And now, pretty much, it's just a game of extruding and extruding. Matching it into the arm until you get something good enough. Once you're done with it, we're just gonna change a little option here. Go to Object, and select Shades Move. And we're gonna go into the Modifier tab, and add a new modifier called Subdivision Surface, to make the model look smoother. Uh, select Optimal Display, and change Subdivision's value to get something good enough. Just enable it. But, as we move through the timeline, the arm we just modeled doesn't quite match the movement of our arm. So now, it's just a matter of matching the depth of the model we just created to our actual arm, so the movement doesn't look weird. Now we're gonna do some simple editing to our arm model. We're gonna add some depth, so the shadows can go under our arm as well. Go to edit mode and select all these top faces here, then extrude them and move them to the right. Then go back into the camera view and try to match them. And we do the same for the other vertices, select all of them, and extrude. Then, it's just a game of trying to match the position again. I'm gonna move the pit boy here, so it looks a little better. And I'll also add it to the arm here. Once we're done, if we go into render view, you can see we now got some shadows. But we do not want this model to appear, we only want the, the shadows. I'm just gonna reposition the pit boy here real quick. And now we're just gonna change a little setting to make the magic happen. We select the, the arm we just modeled, then we go into the object tab, scroll down until you find cycle settings, expand that, and check the shadow catcher box. And now, the object is not being rendered, but the shadows are. You can see the difference with and without the shadows. Looks a lot better with the shadows. And from this point, you're pretty much good to render. Just change the sample count to something relatively higher, and enable the denoiser, so you can reduce the sample count without losing some of the detail. Just try and mess with the settings until you find something that works good for your shot. Before rendering though, we gotta set the frame range correctly. Select the camera, and as you can see, there are lots of keyframes here. Move the pointer to the last keyframe and see its number. In my case, it's 314. So we change the end frame to that. Now Blender will render the whole footage. Now we go into the output tab, scroll down to the output drop down, click the folder icon, and select the destination where you want to save the file. Here, and click accept. 
and here you can change the file format if you want to make if you want it to be a JPEG or PNG sequence or just a video file. Then you just go into render and render animation. I'm not gonna do that right now because I already got it rendered. Then once you're done, you can close out a blender and then you can pretty much just import the sequence you just rendered into your favorite video editor. In my case, I'm using HitFreeMux Express 12. It's a After Effects like a video editor, but it's free and it's pretty awesome. You should definitely check it out. So I rendered separate layers. I rendered only the pip boy, then I rendered only the screen, and then only the shadow. So I could fine tune and add effects individually. In this case, I basically added the glow effects to the screen, so it looked a little more convincing. And from there, it was pretty much just color grading and all that stuff. And you're pretty much done. You've now got a pip boy in your arm. So that's it for this video. 